All right, so after you unpackage everything, if you lay it out on the floor, you're gonna have the two main supports, and then you're gonna have a secondary support. So these are all pretty self-explanatory. You attach the front connector piece to those two screws at each position. And it is easier if you have somebody helping to just hold it up. And so you can see that the position of the, even though there's no front and back, there is a left and a right for this side piece. So you just need to make sure that the, the smaller distance is on the pilot's right hand side. If we're looking at the front of the unit, so the left side as we're looking at it here. So after you get the front on, the next step is going to be to get the, the back piece, the piece with the noble cutout, and that's going to go that's going to go on the back where the chair goes, and this is self-explanatory of which side is up. Now it is important to try and get the cockpit roughly in the position that you want it to be at, final, its final position. It doesn't have to be absolutely in its final position, but you don't want to be moving it over into the next room either. So then after you get these two pieces locked in, You want to grab a tape measure and you can check the squareness. And so to check square, you want to measure the diagonals between there to there and also between there to there. And we're not going for absolute perfection, but you just want to make sure that you're within, or I would start, Brandon, I would do it to the middle one there, right? The, the, the front of the middle Here. divider, yep. Yep, so check there to there, then there to there. Is it with? Yeah. And so that's just going to help you out as far as getting the chair situated. And again, you're just going to within within about a quarter to a half an inch. All right. So next, you want to put the chair on. And so there's two different places where you can mount the chair. There's a more forward position right here, and then there's a more aft position right here. And 90% of the applications are gonna go in the more back position. So really, if you're just a, a, a very, you know, have a, a really short pilot that would normally have to use the rudder pedal extensions in the real airplane, would you need the more forward position? But really, that's if you're shorter than really five foot two. So this is where it's important just to kind of get the, pla the platform squared up because you don't want to, if you try to adjust the squareness of the chair rail to an unsquare platform, it can throw things off because everything kind of gets set from, from the shop here. So there's just four screws and you want to just install each of them loosely before you tighten them all down and that gives you just enough play to move it around in order to get it where you need to be. The front screw that he's working on there is often the hardest. And sometimes having a longer screwdriver can be helpful. Perfect. So then once the seat is on, you can go ahead and do a, a final tighten there. Good. Then the next thing is gonna be the throttle. And again, the throttle comes completely assembled on the rails with the um, armrest. And so there's only one place that this can go. So it just goes right onto the holes there. Back just a touch. Yeah. And it's just
just hold held with with four screws one two three four and again just like the chair this screw here is the most difficult to access and you can kind of just bend the skin in order to in order to access that screw hole So then putting on the console part, you're gonna need an assistant. And if you see these metal projections that come up from the throttle, there's two threaded screws in there. And so when you put this on, you wanna make sure that these metal fingers go up between the plastic and the metal in the GCU um, stand. Yep, and then you can just rest it in place. Now there's two screws, two screw holes, one right here that goes through this aluminum piece and secures into that metal finger that I just showed you. And there's one on the other side. Sometimes finding exactly where these screws, these, these holes line up can be a little bit challenging. And so what you can do, if they don't line up right away, you can take out the two screws in the back of the throttle and that gives you a little bit of play up and down and then if you lift it up i don't know if i'll be able to show this on the video but you can kind of that gives you a little bit of play with that to find to find that hole and then once it's in and you drop it back down then the whole console still has some some adjustment because then the last step after you get those two screws in is putting the screws that actually hold the frame. There's three, one, two, three, on each leg support. One, two, three. And then to put the GCU in, the ribbon cables can only go in one way. Now you just have to be careful that the, um, yeah, you can put it in. So you have to be careful that you don't bend the pins or anything like that as you put them in. And really, they can only go one way. You just want to make sure that they're seated all the way down. And the second one. Yeah. Yep. And then when you put it in place, there's just four screws, one, two, three, four, that are the socket head screws. And that's the final step. Um, obviously, we haven't secured this yet, but if this, is, if this skin is lifted off a little bit, when you put these screws in here, that it's going to suck everything down and hold it nice and tight. Now, there are a couple connections that you need to make once the throttle gets installed. So these two wires coming off the back of the throttle, one is marked as brake. That's for your parking brake. And that's going to be the wire coming down out of the console. Now, these can only plug in one way. So you plug that in. The second one is for the caps. And this is after the caps frame gets put in place. And it's gonna have the exact same type of connector as the parking brake. And again, it can only go one way. The last thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is the USB type B cable is going to plug in right here. So you wanna do that for me, Shayla? Yeah. Yep, so that plugs in. And that's all you need to do for that. So the last you need to, the last of the skins you need to put on are just the the left and right panels. So the, again, this is easier with an assistant. So if you have everything's everything is pre-drilled, but if you have somebody support the back, then you'll be able to find the holes. So basically, on the bottom, you're going to be using the 440 machine screws to go into the aluminum bracket in the middle. Okay, and then there's also in the back here as well, same thing, just a 440 aluminum screw. And then there's a screw that's gonna be a plastic screw, it goes right there. And this is where somebody on the other side kind of pushing counter pressure, because otherwise there's you have, to have nothing to push against. So if you have an assistant kind of 
push on the reverse so that you g it gives you something to kind of push against. And then the same process goes for this last skin, and this is just showing those aluminum pieces. Again, they're, they're already tapped. So the same process for the other side. You just get the two holes lined up. You know, easier with an assistant to support the back. And you find the hole and do the same thing on the back. And then the last one is gonna be the corner. Again, having somebody reach in here to supply some counter pressure so that when you're putting that screw in, it gives you something to push against. Then the last step for the assembly here is gonna be the rudder pedals. I'll put this out of the way. So putting the rudder pedals in, got to navigate them around these screws right here. And then once they go, now the best place to put these rudder pedals is about anywhere from a half inch to about a three quarters of the way back. Now you don't want to go all the way back um, because that can, the, the brake cylinder here can, can bottom out on this and you don't really need to go all that far the way back. So the best we found is about anywhere from the middle of the slot to three quarters of the way back, but no more than that. And if you have shorter pilots, you can adjust that as needed. And then there's just two socket head screws that thread right into there. Yep. So one and then two. This is just a simple USB connection that, that plugs right into the uh, right into the computer. And getting this Getting this one in also because the skin can be in the way a little bit. Um, sometimes it needs to, uh, if you have a, a hex wrench that has a ball tip on it, it gives you a little bit of, um, lets you put a little bit more angle on it. Now to install the caps frame, you just simply slide it right up against the side of the cockpit seat support here. And there's two screws, one here and one here and the holes are gonna already be drilled in the frame. This one obviously hasn't been powder coated yet, um, but that just goes, and then the screw is gonna pass through and it's going to hold it, hold it in right like that. Um, and I already showed you where the, there's gonna be a wire that comes from the, the caps mechanism, and you would plug that in before you put all the skins on, as I showed you when we were hooking up the parking brake. But then um, just putting those two screws there is the final step of actually completing the, um, the cockpit assembly. So after that, as far as the hardware assembly goes, you should be all set.